What's up guys, welcome to Zero Fidelity and in this video I'm going to go over five examples of BS that you'll find in the mass market. Now this video is geared specifically towards people who are new to AV, maybe you're shopping around for your first AV system, and these tips are designed to help you just avoid some of the pitfalls that you're going to find at local mass market stores. So let's get right to it. Alright, so the first example of BS is going to be the power rating on most AV receivers. Guys, I hate to say it, but you're being misled. In fact, we've been misled for decades now because most of these products fall way short of delivering the kind of power that they promise. For example, it's not uncommon for AV receivers at $500 to say that they can give you 60 watts per channel all the way up to over 100 watts per channel. But if you were to actually measure these products, you'll find that they can barely output anywhere between 20 to 30 watts of clean, distortion-free power. It's really kind of a shame, and some of you may be asking, well, why is this the case? How can they get away with this? Well, that's because there is no industry standard that dictates how these manufacturers actually come up with this figure. So what most of them do is they'll play one frequency for one second, measure that, and then that's, boom, that's their numbers right there. And because they know that most of us usually spend our money according to certain numbers like that without actually knowing what they mean, well, it gives them all the more incentive to boost those numbers up as much as they can. The only mass market company I know of that hasn't played this game is Harman Kardon. And unfortunately, that bit them in the butt because, again, most consumers don't know what they're looking for. They just know that when they're going to shop, they're looking for price, they're looking for features, and they're looking for power ratings. And Harman Kardon would be very honest. They would say, hey, this product only outputs 20 watts per channel or 30 watts per Per channel people would see that and they would say well why the hell would I buy that product when the competition for the same amount of money is three times as powerful well it's because Harman Kardon was actually being very honest with you now the good news is that most of us only use between 5 to 10 watts when listening to movies or music but here's the test that you should use whenever you're shopping for an AV receiver and you want something that's truly reasonably powerful ignore the numbers what you're gonna want to do is the heft test and this might look uh, pretty weird in the store. But what you want to do is tilt the receiver up like this, and you're going to notice a heavy brick in here. Usually the weight's going to be concentrated on wherever this brick is going to be. Well, that's going to be the power supply. And typically, the larger and heavier it is, the more powerful the receiver is truly going to be. So that's it, guys. The power rating on receivers. Unfortunately, it's mostly BS. So speaking of power, the second example of marketing BS involves power ratings for speakers. In short, ignore them. And I know it's going to be tough for you guys because when a lot of people are out there assembling AV systems, they try to match the power of the receiver, which we now know is mostly BS, to the power of the speaker. And what you need to know is these ratings are more like guidelines, but for the most part, you should completely disregard them, and here's why. A lot of people have this mistaken idea that what destroys speakers is too much power. That's almost never the case. In fact, what destroys them is the exact opposite, which is not having enough power. Because if you buy a receiver and you're trying to crank the volume and it just doesn't have the capability to give you the power that's needed to produce the volume that you want, well, it starts overloading. It starts sending distortion to the speakers. That distortion will eventually break the speakers, and it could also break the receiver at the same time. So instead of paying attention to power ratings, understand what your needs are and get the most powerful receiver that you can possibly afford. All right, so moving on, the third example of marketing BS is whenever you come across loudspeaker companies or cable companies that claim that their product is high resolution capable, because here's the bottom line. High resolution is a digital format. It has nothing to do with speakers or cables. And while some claim a certain advantage of bandwidth, that's just all BS. Here's what it really is. It's a digital format. And to understand what I mean, let's use the CD as an example, because the CD is the bedrock. It is the de facto standard for digital resolution. Now, we're going to separate this into three tiers. And on one side of the tier, we have MP3s. We have the stuff that you stream from Amazon, Spotify, etc. That's considered low resolution stuff because it's lower resolution than what you get on a CD. Then in the middle, you have the CD. And then on the other hand, you have the high resolution stuff. It's higher resolution than what you can get on a CD. Usually that's audio file formats. It's going to be high end AV formats, etc. That's what high resolution really means. Now, sometimes you'll see high resolution stickers on products like a receiver, and that's because the receiver is capable of decoding high resolution files. But whenever you see a loudspeaker or a cable company claiming that they have a high resolution advantage, ignore it, it's BS. 
All right, so speaking of ridiculous claims, my fourth example of BS is whenever you find an HDMI cable company that claims that their product will give you more color, more resolution, a better refresh rate than the competition or even their other cables. Guys, just completely ignore that. It is almost entirely BS. All right, so the final example of marketing BS that I want to highlight in this video involves high-priced HDMI cables because here's the bottom line, guys. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money to get a cable that will deliver great, consistent performance in most AV applications. In fact, all that really matters is whether or not the cable adheres to CEA 861 specifications or in the case of somebody who's using an ultra high-end setup, you're going to want something that adheres to 861F specification, but that's it. And I say this just because I have a lot of experience with this subject, just because in a previous life, one of the largest electronics manufacturers in the business hired me to grow markets for them. And I'd like to say I did a pretty kick-ass job, but nonetheless, one of the things I had to do is I had to go into these stores and make sure the products actually looked good and would stand out amongst the competition. And because I had a lot of connections within the industry, I had dozens of HDMI products on hand. And what I would do is I'd go into these various stores and I'd unplug the stock cables in the back of servers and Blu-ray players and insert all these different HDMI cables. And you know what I found? It almost never made a difference. Even in pitch black rooms with ISF calibrated TVs, you would never really see a difference between, say, a stock mono price cord and some of the expensive stuff that I was sent. The only exception that I found was the AudioQuest Carbon. On flagship TV sets, this cable would definitely look a lot better than just about everything else that I tried. But that was the only exception to the rule. And thus, you know, I started really promoting the heck out of it. And whenever a customer would, of course, want to buy a ultra high-end set but that was the only time where I could ever say yeah you know what cables seem to make a good visual difference everyone pretty much agrees with it I could repeat it across many different situations that's it otherwise unless you're running literally a flagship setup of the best of the best components don't worry about it buy an inexpensive cable be happy and that's it guys this is all that I have for you now. I realize that this format isn't really palatable for a lot of people, so if you made it this far, congratulations. Thanks for watching, and as until next time, peace.